Okay, guys. I think we are live now. Okay. Okay, okay live now. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, welcome uh, everybody, and I would like to welcome our uh, uh, honored guest today, uh, Mr. Percy Uncle. I think he is one of the legends uh, in 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 coaching all over the world, and uh, maybe some of you <inaudible> don't know. Some of you don't know uh, him, but in 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 the beginning, I would like to. Uh, to to welcome also uh, our colleagues, uh, Mr. Hisham, Mr. Tarek, and uh, my dear brother, uh, Mr. Enzo. Uh, and also, I would like to thank Dr. Elwani and Huayda, the, Dr. Elwani, the president of African Confederation and uh, vice president of FAVB, and uh, uh, my sister Huayda. Uh, uh, the technical director of uh, the executive director of uh, CVB. Also, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ben Hamida. Uh, they are working for, uh, the, the, uh, the technical director of Academy of African Academy. <coughs> uh, all of them, and also Tarek Ladwar. I don't like to, to forget anybody. And the press officer of CVB. Uh, everybody is working. Uh, every, now we have also Sarah uh, joining us. Uh, she is helping us and all other colleagues in, in CVB. They are working very hard to have this webinar. Uh, come back, coming back to uh, our guest, our, I mean, very important guest. I think in uh, from three, four years, uh, we had uh, one of the important events in Cairo. Uh, uh, the high performance, the, the fourth high performance, and uh, Percy was the, the, the instructor. And, uh, and I, I have to say Percy because he's my brother. I will not say Mr. or Coach Percy because he's my dear brother. I know him from 20 years now. And uh, I think uh, he is the, the, the most important coach for youth and juniors all over the world. And I consider him as a golden coach from my uh, belief, the golden coach uh, of Brazil, because he prepared a lot of important and uh, top level players like Jiba, like uh, Gustavo Andreas, like Andrea uh, Hiller, like Leo, like Ricardo, Ricardinho, and also Manu Sabadi. Uh, I was coaching Manu Sabadi in, in Egypt here, here from three, for, from four years. And uh, you have to listen to him, what he said about uh, his coach, uh, who built him. And sometimes uh, people doesn't know that the, the coach of youth and juniors, and uh, always like the father, the real father in sports. Then he is a father for more than uh, a lot of um, maybe three, four hundred players or more. Uh, on the other side, you have to know that uh, Percy, why I said golden, because Percy in front of you had eight, eight golden uh, uh, medals for world championship youth and juniors and five silver. Uh, in uh, uh, in South America, he had 11 gold and two silver. And also he had the golden medal of the youth games. On the other side, I know that he has a lot of, uh, 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 I mean, uh, other uh, uh, medals. But I mean, when you are the champion, the world champion for eight times, I think we have to deserve we have to say uh, we have one of the important uh, coaches uh, in the, the, the modern and near history. Uh, I know very well that everybody is asking himself, uh, Brazil on the top of the volleyball from 20 years or more. And this man was the man who built this future for Brazil. 
who built the players, the golden players, the top level players. He, he was working from since 1990 till he left maybe in 2016 uh, or 2014, 15, uh, the, the Brazilian Federation. Uh, also, by the way, he was the head coach of youth and juniors in Qatar. And in Colombia, he was the head coach of all categories, I think so. And now he's working in uh, Portugal in one of the clubs there. I think uh, we have today one of my dear and I believe top level coaches in youth and juniors, uh, Percy, with us. And I hope you enjoy. I hope you listen to him. I, I hope that you get uh, 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 the, the golden information from him. And uh, now the floor for him to, to start to give us First of all, as, uh, I mean, uh, some words about uh, from himself to Africa, to African coaches, and to uh, to his lovers, and then we can start our topic today, which is side out, and I think it's very important to know that side out is uh, the, the one of the important parts from the game. That's why. We choose side out, and also when he, uh, I mean, uh, suggests side out, I accept because I know that in Africa we had little bit some problems in side out, especially in reception. That's why uh, welcome Percy, and the floor for you to start. Thank you, my brother Sheriff. Uh, it's a, a honor for me. Uh, to receive an invitation from you, especially from you. And for me, it's a pleasure to talk about volleyball, I talk, because it's my life. And you, Sheriff, was one of the, 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 the men that God put in my way uh, to become a, a, a brother, volleyball's brother, <laughs> of course. So uh, thank you for the, the kind words. Uh, I tried. Uh, almost 40 years working in a court, do my best. Uh, of course, I am a look man and a blessed man because uh, I had a chance to work in, in, a, in a country that volleyball is a, a big sport, like Brazil, for example. Uh, so I am blessed for that also because uh, working in Brazil is totally different than working in any, any part in the world. So. I am blessed for that, of course. So uh, thank you for your invitation. Uh, it's important to me to, to, to talk about volleyball. In, in this pandemic moment, I think it's a, a great uh, thing that happens uh, that we can share a lot of uh, subjects, a lot of information, a lot of things. So uh, in the end of this pandemic moment, probably we we will become a, a better coach than before. I hope so. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I have 40 years working in the court, man. Uh, I think uh, almost time to, to retire in this court, but I have a little bit good health to continue. And it's a great moment for me, of course, to, to share some experience that I have. And uh, let's go do it, right? Can I start with the to sharing? Uh, all right, let's go. It's okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, after a, a long time working in, in a man, uh, this year, this next season, I will start, he started to work with women. Uh, it's a, a special moment for me, of course, because uh, almost of my career, uh, I work it with men. So it will be a big challenge, special for me. Uh, so I have to to, to do my best to try to change something in women volleyball because it's totally different than men. And, and this is my club now. 
Nowadays, I work in this, in this club, Lusófona Volleyball Club. This is in Lisbon, Portugal. And I, I, I am here I, since uh, uh, October of last year. So uh, my, my subject, my topic for today is side out or complex one. Uh, it means all interactions which happen after opponent serves the ball till the ball is returned for the other, other court. Uh, common actions are passing, setting, and attacking. So we consider this uh, to include a number of concepts. So especially, I will talk about reception, about setting, and about attack. And of course, after this attack, we need to cover uh, and uh, give a chance to continue uh, to play if the ball returns from the block. So, but before it, uh, I have to, to show you uh, a recent uh, research or recent study uh, that my close friend and my good friend, Leandro Dutra, made it in USA. He is I studying PhD there, and I, I want. I think it's too much important to share it to to spread uh, some new information about, especially for about side out. Okay, he made this study uh, in the last season that not finished totally uh, in 2019 in NCAA in women's category. And the level number one, or, or I mean, the, the best level in NCAA uh, in USA. Uh, the players that play in this category, in this championship, uh, the player from 19 years old to 23 years old. So with the best level that they have there in this age, in this, in this uh, category, all right? So, he made a study uh, in this uh, championship uh, after the second round to the end, to the final. So he studied 32 teams and total of matches 31. So he, he found uh, some important uh, results about exactly about the side out. For example, uh, he studied 170 sets from the second round to the, the, to the final, right? In 98 sets, the team that made, uh, had, uh, had a good efficiency in side out won and just in 19 sets that the, the team uh, made a very good efficiency south side out, they lose. It represents, for example, for the winners, 84% of the sets uh, won who uh, made the, the most efficient uh, side out. It just 60% they, they get a good, uh, uh, less efficiency, but they lose. The best efficiency from side out, but they lose. So in sets, who winner? Uh, exactly the team that had uh, uh, more efficiency inside out. It's important to understand it because it's not easy, especially in women, all right? About the matches, he studied 31 matches, as I, I said before. Uh, the efficiency of the winner, uh, 28 matches, the winner had uh, the, uh, the good efficiency. And just three matches, they had a good efficiency, Best efficiency than the other than, than the opponent, but they lose. It's too much important because it represents 19% of the, the match that the winner get got uh, 
the good efficiency inside out. So uh, the, this important study because this confirm that the importance, how important is the, the side out. Yeah, I was totally surprised with this, this result because I think that before that complex two is or, or transition uh, have a, a big uh, percentage in the final result, especially in the woman in the match. But in this, in this study, uh, we can find a different uh, result that normally we think it before. So it's too much important nowadays that your side out uh, have to be strong all the time. Of course, that this study or this research is not a conclusive study because we have to study uh, a different uh, leagues around the world. It probably in Asian Championship, for example, we can find a different results because uh, they under this correct uh, their characteristic or their physical uh, conditions they need more attempts to get a point. And normally, in complex two, they they put more uh, effort to get point by complex two. But we have to confirm it before. So we have a group in Brazil, a group of coaches that are working around the world, and we start to, to study uh, at different leagues uh, in the world. But this, uh, this is important to compare, for example, the, the, the results that we can find in Asia Championship, for example, especially in Japan, for, for example, and compare with this result with the African Championship, for example. And of course, they, we, we can find a different uh, results because they are different culture, different uh, physical condition. Uh, and during this pandemic moment, I kept in contact with a lot of uh, coaches around the world. Uh, a lot of coaches that work with the women team. And uh, some of them are working so hard to try to get more points uh, as possible from the side out. Uh, for this reason, we are seeing uh, important uh, evolution, especially in uh, back row attack, uh, especially with opposite, opposite player and uh, attack from pipe. We can see uh, uh, the best things in the world using much more uh, attack from back back one and pipe. Uh, this part of the plan of some coaches uh, around the world, especially for example, uh, Serbia in women and Italy in women because they have a, a two excellent players uh, playing as opposite, like Egonu by Italy uh, and Bo Bosevich, Boscovich in Serbia. So uh, I think the coaches in the, in the high level of women team are trying to, to, to play as close as possible than the men. So we can, we, we can see it easily in some, some national teams, especially around the world. Other important thing is about uh, you coach from Africa and about your country or your club. Uh, with this information, you can decide which way you have to follow, especially in the movement thing. Uh, first, if you have to put big effort to get a point direct from side out, or you have to try to get point from complex two or from opponent mistakes. It's a, a, a great decision as uh, you have to, to decide to, to plan, to put in your plan, which way you have to follow. Of course, you have to consider the culture and physical characteristics of your people 
but this is an important thing that you have to put in your in your plan all right so uh, come back for the to the side out uh, i understand about the side out we have um, a different conditions in from reception look this picture please it's exactly like uh, a traffic lights or semaphore. Uh, I divide the, the court in three zones to understand what we have to do in each, in each zone. The green area, it's like um, a good condition for us. If your reception uh, goes for this area A, you have all chance to get a point easily or to setting the ball for the sparkers against only one block. So it's a, a great moment, a great chance to you to get a point immediately from the, the side out. But if your reception go to the uh, zone B or area B, probably you have a little bit difficult to get a point for inside out, okay? And it's like a yellow in the semaphore, in the traffic lights. You have to, pay, to play with a, 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 a good attention. You have to put attention in that. So if your reception come from, go to this uh, red area, probably you have too much difficult to get a point by side out. So that's, that's I understand volleyball, just not only for reception, but for the, the complex two, is, uh, we have to, to understand the same colors, the same possibilities, the same condition. So let's go for, try to identify this, uh, this situation. For example, uh, probably the big mistakes from the coach start here. Uh, I can talk it easily because when I was young, I made too much mistakes because I didn't understand what represent in my final result, each, uh, what I have to do in each area. For example, in green area, remember the green area? It's not a, a big area, it's a short, it's a small area, all right? Uh, in men, in our Super League in Brazil, uh, just 30% of the reception go for this area. I mean, uh, when the ball goes for the green area, we have all possibility to attack. We have four chances for spikers ready to attack. In the women's Super League, in Brazilian Super League, we have 27%. It's an average, an average, all right? So we have a great chance to spike uh, one spike against one blocker. It's too much important. So uh, when the ball come from the yellow area, let's go to a yellow area. Uh, I can call this one the reception with quality B, right? Uh, in Brazil, we have 25% for this area in reception. And the woman, 18% in this area. Uh, in the red area, this one, the big one, uh, the, the, the problem is start here. We have 45%, almost half part of the game, with too much difficult to get a point direct from side out. In men, in women, we have 55% uh, to try to get a point from this area. So, the big mistake starts from here. Why? Uh, for example, when I was young, uh, I loved to, to work with 
in good conditions for my 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 team for example i put more hours more time to training in good situation good situation means that my my team will play just in green area but it represents just 30 percent of the the total of the the match the total of the game so if you decide to work just in, in good condition, probably you will have too much problems to get a point in the other, other situation, like yellow area or red area. So you have to put in the balance and plan uh, a, a good plan to prepare your team to play in good conditions. I mean, with four four spikers ready to attack you have to prepare your players to play in a little bit difficult to to get a point like together green area and yellow area and you have to prepare much much better to play in in, in the reception that goes to the red area i mean you have to be ready to attack one against two blockers or one against triple block, three three blockers. So that's a big problem that the, the, some coaches don't understand. You have to train the situations that are not comfortable, un, uh, not comfortable to you. So if you get something, some uh, get some success in that probably you have more chance to get a point direct from side out, okay? Uh, it's important to, to equilibrate your plan, your, your match. So you have to organize the reception system. How? First, general concept in reception. Uh, we have to decide, uh, to divide, sorry, to divide the 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 serves in two kinds of serves the weak serves and the aggressive serves they are totally different of course so in weak serves reception a is mandatory and high balls so uh, you cannot uh, accept uh, mistakes from weak serves uh, for that to get it to get a good condition for that the, you have to 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 put in your your plan that the good communication between the players is too much important and you have to define the responsibility especially in the conflict zone uh, so if the opponent has a weak serves it's our chance to get a point easily and by side out. So it's mandatory to receive a good, uh, a good quality. I mean, in the green area, okay? But uh, sometimes the opponent, of course, have aggressive serves. The first concept for that, don't give points. So try to continue to play with a minimum level, it's too much important. Ensure that we will continue to play with two options in attack. If you have two options for the setter, it's a, a very good thing, especially in aggressive serves or uh, difficult serves, for example, between two receivers uh, in the line, in lateral line, in the end of the line. Uh, it, to keep the with a good level is important that the ball, uh, the reception with the high ball in zone eight of data volley, or between three and six, exactly like this. Imagine it that three guys re receiving the ball, uh, the service comes from from the line, it's difficult service or between two, two receivers or in the line in the, the right side. 
uh, you have to ensure if you get a good reception like A, it's a plus. But in strong or aggressive sets, you have to put the ball in this zone, hide in this zone. Uh, because, for example, young players trying, they will try to put in good conditions for the setter. But they forget that the serves come from too much aggressive. So it's very difficult to receive in good conditions for the set. In this moment, just in this moment, we have to, to put the ball high in eight, like a defense. Because we have a chance to play with two, two options of the attack, like position four, for example, or position two. Uh, this is important to divide the quality of the opponent's service. Uh, too much aggressive, we have uh, to ensure that we can continue to play with a minimum level. Min minimum level, uh, it's, uh, it's important that we have two options to the setter. If you have just one option for the setter, for, for the spiker, uh, probably you have more problems to get, to get a point by side out, okay? Uh, general concepts in reception. Your team is in good way if it is as far away from zero percent as possible. For example, if you get uh, 60 percent of good reception, you are going, you are running in the good way. But if your team is in bad way, if it is as close to zero percent as possible, for example. Yeah, your reception and have just 50% in a good reception. So we have to organize better your attack. Attack, especially uh, with uh, one against the three in three blockers. It's very difficult to get a point on that, right? Uh, if you decide, you are coach, decide that your team uh, needs to receive by overhand pass, one important decision you have to do. The reception line is advanced. Uh, if you put your line of reception in the middle of the, the court, I think it's, it's very dangerous uh, to receive the ball by overhand pass because you have to touch the ball in front of your face, in front of your, your, your head. If you move back, you are giving a big chance for, for the servers to make a point direct. So if you decide to receive by overhead pass, move in front. Uh, the reception line is necessary to be advanced, okay? The other important thing in reception is the best receiver plus liberal are responsible for a big area in the court. Normally, when we decide to put in the six players in the court, uh, we have one outside hitter, very good in reception. This guy gives us the, the, the balance, the reception uh, in good condition, of course, with the liberal. It normally, we have, do put the another outside hit. Uh, it's a, a very good, a strong spike, but no have too much, too much uh, good reception. Of course, if you have, you have two very good outside hitter and good receiver, it's the key for for continuing to play in high level. But if you don't have this guy, you have to consider to divide the responsibilities in the reception. So, if you have a good, he has, he needs to receive more area uh, with the libero. If you don't have uh, a, a good receiver, uh, you have to, to put in less area uh, uh, responsible for, for receive the sets. So, it's important. Uh, of course, the worst play in reception is responsible for a small area. You have to study your team, of course, to decide which area 
is important for this player. So uh, the good communication, just to remind you, the good communication is too much important uh, because with communication, we can take out the doubts. And in the in aggressive service, for example, uh, sometimes we don't have too much time to decide what I have to do. So it's important that you as coach define it previously before they, they start the, 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 the game or start the match, all right? Perfect. Uh, Sheriff, we, we will have a uh, translate for French or no? Oh, for, to, tonight we don't have because Mr. Bahameda uh, uh, is sick and also uh, 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 my brother, my aunt plays from uh, from Cameroon did it attend, then we will yeah. have it uh, in English, but after that, we will translate uh, to three languages, to uh, uh, French and Portuguese and Arabic. Uh, but right. uh, uh, yes, uh, YouTube, after we finish, we will make like Mr. Benhameda is doing that now uh, for us in, in, in our African Academy. We translate for another three languages uh, and prepare the video and uh, share the video again. All right, perfect. Okay. okay. So, uh, after the reception, of course, we have to, to set in the ball as better as possible all the time. This, these pictures is from some uh, counties from Africa. Uh, I know is one very well, the Mohammed from Egypt, because in 2001, like, yes, Sheriff, we played against them. <laughs> Just, I think one of the best Abdallah. generation, Abdallah, Abdallah. 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 exactly, Abdallah, yeah. uh, Sorry, uh, I think this generation was, was one of the best of, from Egypt, because they, they got the fourth place in the World Championship, and it's a, a, a very good setter, of course. So, uh, I understand the setter, he has to be a wizard. Not just one guy that put the good balls for the other, for the spiker. He has to be a, a wizard. And we have some, some, some things to identify if this setter really a wizard or really is the wizard that we have, we need to be in the, in the team. So the setter must have, of course, good technique. My overhand uh, touch, of course, without it, it's impossible to play as a setter. Naturally, he is a great lead leadership. And of course, he needs autonomy to play. Uh, I found uh, during my entire career uh, coaches that uh, train the setters like a puppet. You have to do it, you have to do it, you have to do it. No, I think the setter, especially in this function, this uh, situation, the setter have to understand, they have to improve, have to learn. Uh, with personal decisions. If you are a coach that uh, the treatment with the, your set is like puppet, I think it's not a good idea. From the moment we can, we can, uh, we can organize better uh, the team, but for the future, for this set, he needs totally autonomy to play. It, uh, it's, uh, of course, you have to give him the directions, uh, the ways, the, the all things that he needs to decide, but not you will decide what he has to do in the court. It's totally different. Of course, we, you will help him to understand the game, to understand your uh, their spikers, the, to understand how the opponent team uh, organize uh, 
the block system. I mean, you have to give him all uh, tools to understand the game, but he has he needs autonomy to 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 improvement to to become a, a very good setter and to become a wizard because we need a, a special player in this in this function. Uh, for me, it's important uh, that the setter uh, need to play with quick hit in different situation or in different condition of reception. For example, uh, if the reception has uh, a quality A or B, you have a great chance to play with the first tempo, with quick, uh, uh, quick spike, of course. But if you have a reception with quality C, it's almost impossible uh, to use the first tempo. So it's too much important that the, your setter uh, have a, a, a good synchronism synchronized with the, the middle blockers. So it's too much important. Uh, other thing, uh, and I believe too much in that, that in the, in the break point phases, it's not the, the subject for today, then it's not the talk today, but it's important to understand what the setter have to do uh, in the court. Uh, it's too much important that he can play, he can, uh, use the first first tempo in breakpoint phases. Uh, of course, if he has a chance to play with this uh, with these conditions, of course, not in, in crazy moments. No, if you if they uh, he has a chance to play with the first tempo, you he has to do it. So, and I believe that the the biggest team in the world, uh, I mean, not only in the senior team, because I, uh, I have worked uh, a lot of times in youth or senior or uh, junior teams, uh, the best teams in all categories needs to be a uh, first tempo very well. They have to use the first tempo very well. And the setter is responsible for that. Of course, you have to be in your team, uh, middle blockers in condition to, to attack the first tempo in different situations, of course. Uh, he has he have to, to play with uh, accurate settings, uh, independent of the, the quality of the, the reception, A, B, or C. He has to put uh, the spikers in very good condition to attack. Uh, the other thing that I believe too much, uh, he has, he, he need to, to play uh, or the great, great ability to adapt to spikers and not the, the opposite from that. For example, I know uh, in my four, almost 40 years working in volleyball, uh, I, I met a lot of uh, setters that they try to put this, this kind of, uh, of game of play uh, and not to adapt uh, to spikers. Uh, the spikers don't, don't need to, to adapt to, to setter. The setter need to adapt to spike. It's a good way for the setter because he need to understand that, for example, the sheriff, for, for example, uh, needs to receive the ball uh, different than me, different than the other, other players. Uh, so it's too much uh, difficult to, to find setter with this magic, all right? So I will try to put this one, but I think I... Oh, look at this. I am talking about wizard. Look the magic of this setter. 
Look at this. It's low motion. Did you see very well this video, Sheriff? Mas, one more time. Look at the, the action of the... Look at the action of the setter. Better. So uh, he he tried to to move your move your body for back and this setting for the first tempo. This is kind of the the magic that we have to find in our our setters and the setters need to become a good wizard to help your team to play as as better as possible. So. Uh, from the building the game, from the setter's perspective, it's not too easy to become a very good setter because he has to study, he has to understand the, what the, the game, he has to learn every day a di yeah, different things to help him to decide which is better for the, the spikers, for the team. So he has to study the middle, the opponent middle blockers. For example, if the opponent middle blocker follow our middle blocker or no, if uh, always he jump in reception A, he has to understand if the middle blocker uh, wait the decision of the setter to do something different. Uh, so, he needs to know how they block related to reception. For example, uh, what the action that middle blocker uh, do when the reception is A is very, uh, it's, it's the same when the reception is B, is the same when the reception is C, uh, probably no. So he needs to understand what the, the actions or what the movements of the opponent middle blockers to decide uh, what he has to do during the game. It's not easy, of course, because he needs to understand volleyball. He needs to, to, to study a little bit more than the others, other guys. So it's, it's too much important. Uh, to decide what he has to do, he needs to understand, he needs to, to learn, he needs to study the side blockers. I mean, he needs to study the blocker from position four and the block from position two. Because he needs to understand what they do uh, in different situations. For example, if the position four the side blocker from position four stay close to the middle block or no? If he help the quick hit or no? And he need to understand how much they help. For example, sometimes I can see in the in some some match the position four stay close by but never never help the first tempo. And sometimes he helped a lot of times. So the, the setter, our wizard, need to understand what decision that the, the side blockers uh, do during the game. Uh, how they block when the quick hit or reception enter in their zone. I mean, imagine the reception was in direction to position, our position two. It's entry in zone of the block of position four, the opponent position four. So 
what they do uh, when happens this this situation, for example. So is the same for position four, then position two. So if the reception goes to position uh, in their zone of block, what they do? So it's almost impossible uh, to decide uh, if the, your setter don't understand it. So you, as coach, you have to, to give him all information about the, 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 the block system of the opponent block system to, to discuss with, with him about the decision that you have to do during the match. Of course, not during the match, before the match, they have to understand uh, what they do in block uh, before start the match, of course. And in his mind, he are building the game uh, under this study, under this information. It's too much important to, to, to the setters. Because if he studied a little bit, a little bit, not too much, he can play much better than if you don't know nothing about the opponent uh, system block. All right? And it's, it's, uh, it's not to have end because all the time he needs to understand what's happening in the opponent. Uh, they have to understand what the trio of blockers do in different rotation, but it's not enough. For example, in our position, in the in our position one, what they do, the trio of blockers, right? What they do in our position one, but in different situation, what they do with our good reception or reception way, what they do in our reception B and what they do in reception C, but not just in P1. He needs to know what's happened in all rotation. I mean, P1, P6, P5, P4, P3, P2. So to play a setter, you have to identify in your group a special guy. Uh, intelligent with leadership to understand the game to 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 building the, the game under some situation uh, I mean uh, uh, your situation or good situation or no and the situation of the the opponent so uh, it's not easy to find uh, setters like Abdallah like uh, Bruninho like uh, Ricardinho it's, it's very different no no, it's not easy to, to find a lot of guys like, like them, okay? So, after it, in, in one important, uh, I think most important uh, to get a point, of course, is by attack. So, we have to, uh, to, to train this one uh, because it will guarantee us our point inside out, all right? And of course, in, in breakpoint phase, is the same, okay? So, to define what the, our middle blocker has to do, uh, it's important to understand uh, what they have to do first, right? So, our middle blocker must be able to attack all kinds of quick attack. I mean, uh, First tempo in front, first tempo in back, first tempo seven. In women, uh, uh, slide. So in women, we have four, four kinds of the first tempo or quick attack. And the men normally we have used it just three, uh, but have some, some kinds of uh, the first step has some different actions. For example, uh, set the ball, passing of the block. So we have a lot of, but basically we have three. Uh, first step in front, first step in back, 
of the setter and seven. All right? But he has to attack in all directions as possible in all kinds of quick attack. For example, uh, first step in front of the setter. He has two diagonal. So he has uh, to learn, he has to be able to attack in, in these two directions. It's the same for quick uh, attack back back of the setter in in back of the, the set so he has two two directions he has to be able to attack in just two directions and it's not uh, not enough he has to to be able to use variation of attack tip because sometimes the tip is a, is a great decision of all sparks in the world and why I mean to use the block to, to get a point, uh, to use the block to, to block out. So uh, it's a, a, a real uh, actions or real needs from the, the our middle blocker. Yeah. So he has to be able to attack in reception B and break point phases. So it's, it's not just to, to, to attack in, in reception A. No, the synchronous with setter have to be more than it. So he has to be able to attack in break point phase or reception B. It's not easy because need to be a, a, a very good synchronous with the setter. Uh, very good connection with the setter. So the middle block is too much important to, to get a, a, a very strong team. I don't believe in teams that no have too much, too much uh, numbers of the attack from, me, uh, from, from first tempo. Because if you don't use too much, too much times the first tempo, uh, all the times your opposite or your uh, outside eater will play under pressure. So uh, imagine you, uh, your player attack, attack 20 times under pressure. Probably one, probably he, he has a, a big chance to make some mistakes. Uh, during the game. So each rotation, our rotation, for example, our position one, uh, the setter have to, to play with a good uh, balance. I mean, three balls from middle blocker, three balls from opposite, three balls from outside hitter. Because see, one of them receive uh, unbalanced for example, six balls from opposite, zero balls from middle blocker, zero balls from, from outside hitter, probably the opposite will attack under high pressure in block. So it's not easy to, to get a point when you have you want two guys in front of you or three guys in front of you. So it's too much important, okay? And the middle blocker is responsible to to create a doubt in the block opponent block system. If your set don't use too much the, our middle blocker, uh, no have doubt. So the decisions from the block systems is a little bit easier than before. All right? So it's important to, to try to, to use the first step all the time. Uh, in 2008, uh, in the Olympic Games, uh, the Brazil national team women, I think, this this team play played in at this moment uh, more close to the men style or the men system than the other team in the world, because 
the Brazil team at this moment had uh, had the uh, the setter Fofão, and she can can setting all the time with first tempo in break point five uh, phases uh, and use the first step all the time. So it's make made a, a, a big difference to get a, a, a gold medal in the 2008. So it's important to middle blocker uh, be able to attack all the time and with good, uh, good scores. So the, the needs that the outside hitter or opposite need to, to, to do in the court must be able to attack one against one, I mean, in good condition, all right? He must be able to attack one against two blockers. Uh, it became a little bit hard to get a point. And have to be, must be able to attack one against three guys in front of, of the, our outside hit or opposite. So, he need to 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 train to get a point to get get a point in all directions for example uh, diagonal line uh, to touch the, the the hands to to use the the tip the wipe or continue to play so uh, what i think this is the, the important point in your plan for example, if you use to train uh, more one against one, probably when you have a, a, a big, uh, a more blockers in front of you, you have more difficult to get a point because your player is not able to attack in this situation. So uh, I, I can tell you, train more times, your difficulties in the game in not not only your facility or your uh, your simple things so you have to to train a different situation yeah it is, is important to understand uh, the final meter of the cut it's a good zone to attack when you have uh, three blockers in front of you. So the final meter of the court is a great uh, direction, a great decision that the, the spikers have to do, especially outside hitter or opposite. Okay? Uh, they, they need to, to be able to, to variations of attack. For example, tip it's sometimes it's a, 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 a surprise for the defense. Uh, wipe, I mean, to use the, the block to get a point block and out, uh, to attack the, to touch the, the block and, and the ball go out. Uh, or you have to decide, for example, especially uh, in bad situation that you are, uh, you know, the, the, your outside hitter, of course. Uh, for example, the, the setting came from the reception C. Probably you have three guys in front of you in block. So you have to decide if you will try to get a point, uh, attacking the final meter of the court, uh, block out, or you have to continue with second ball. What it, it means? Uh, it means that you attack the, attack in the block uh, to, to ball to come back for your, your curves and try to continue to play and try to find a, a, a better moment to, to attack again. Uh, it's very difficult to, to do it because it's not too, too much uh, simple to do because you have to, to attack the block uh, with the good uh, power, 
to come back to your team. Your team have have to help you in this moment. So it's not easy to get it, but it's an important uh, moment for outside hitter or opposite. It's sometimes for middle blocker also. Yeah. Uh, and all spikers have to know the extra tour of opponent block, what they do in different situations, not only the, the middle blocker, not only the setter, but for example, in reception seek, for example, what they do, they close the line, they close the diagonal, they close, uh, blah, blah. okay, you have to, uh, your, your player have to understand it, you have to, to take a decision under these uh, possibilities, all right? Uh, covering the attack. Of course, it's some coaches understand it's the it's complex three or complex four. So, yeah, but it's important during the, the side out because the boss uh, have a chance to, to return to you after the block. So you have to, to be able to, to continue to play. Uh, so predisposition is everything uh, in defense or to cover the, the attack. Because if your play, uh, play with a high predisposition, maybe all players that not are uh, in attack are ready to touch the ball if, if the ball return from the block. So it's too much important. It's the good point, especially for the young guys, young players, to understand the, the volleyball. Uh, it's not easy to understand, especially to young guys, young players, uh, to understand the volleyball because it's a diff different game. It's not a natural movement. Uh, volleyball don't have too much natural movement, so all the, the movements from that we have to use in volleyball are constructed, are building. So uh, it's important to understand one part of this understanding is about the, 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 what you have to do when you are not uh, in, in attack, you are not uh, touch the ball in any, any time. So it's important. Of course, that for example, if you have a good reception like A, you have more spikers able to attack. If you have more spikes able to, to attack, probably you have less players to help you to cover uh, close to the point of this attack. So uh, I, I, I have to say you again, the predisposition is everything in this situation. Uh, Counterwise, if you have less players able to attack, of course, you have more players covering close to the point of the attack. So uh, it depends totally about uh, the, the quality or of your reception. Good reception, you have four guys able to attack. Uh, you have four spikes able to attack. So less players close to the, to the point, just the liberal. Uh, can stay close to the, the point of attack. If you have a, a bad reception, you have to, you have more players uh, close to the point of attack. Uh, but it's not, uh, not enough, of course. All players need to be alert if the ball returns, uh, especially for the youngs. The youngs, it's for me, it's very hard to, to put in their minds that's too much important uh, to be alert, to help the team, not just in attack. They have to help the team in other, other actions or other function. For example, to keep the ball flying. It's, it's very important. And if you not start this, this situation with the youngs, uh, it's difficult to understand how the volleyball 
uh, how the volleyball is work. Uh, I understand volleyball. The other other thing, uh, for example, you have to train to put in your plan uh, more situation. Nothing. You don't have to to train a lot of good in good conditions. You have to prepare your team to play in bad conditions also, because the bad condition rep represent around uh, inside out, specific inside out, in almost half time or, or half half actions that you have in total. For example, fifty percent of your the, your reception is good. You have in other uh, as opposite. 50% to try to get a point in bad situation. And the big mistake from the coach is that just work in good situation. Of course, working in good situation is good for the players because all the times they are comfortable to attack. So you have to, to take the, the spikes from the, the comfort zone I mean, don't work, don't train, just in reception A. Uh, you have to obligate them to attack from reception C, because sometimes we call they... uh, Percy, please. We call this out of system because I think that they will understand when you say out of system. All uh, right. I mean, the system is is the the, the perfect uh, reception passing. And out of system, the 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 bad passing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This. So you have to to work much much more in out of system than than the in good system because good systems is easy to play it's easy to attack is uh, we can feel very well because the conditions are good for us so you have to uh, to train in different situation to get a point all the time so you want important point for the the coach that. Uh, train uh, this sit bad situation or out uh, of system because it's the define if you are uh, ready to win or no. You remember the the side out in some study represented around seventy percent of your chance to win. So you have to do it very well to to get a chance to win the the the, the match. The other thing is uh, train a uh, hundred percent that you have. Don't accept uh, uh, medium effort from the, your guys because during the games don't have chance to do it. If you you play uh, not a hundred percent, you you are giving a big chance for the opponent to walk, to win the match. So why to do it? Uh, train uh, in in situation that you are you are you have to to think about the, your decisions. Use much more game likes to decide exactly because the game like exactly is it. Uh, you have a lot of problems to resolve. Try to resolve these problems during the train. All right. Uh, and play like a train and train like a, a match. That's a good way to, to decide. So that's the, the topic uh, that I have to show you. Uh, this is my contacts. Uh, if you have chance to, to, to keep in contact with me by Instagram or by email, yeah, I am ready. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Percy. Uh, I have to some, I mean, uh, uh, words to say that I would like to 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 add for you for after your uh, 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 valuable information that we have in volleyball the the side out which Percy talked about it uh, tonight, and we have transition. We, we call it before. Complex one and complex two, but now we are talking about side out and transition. 
or transitional period. And side out, we have in side out, as Percy said today, the uh, reception and setting, and then attack. But he add one very important uh, point and information. It's valuable for me also. And he talked about coverage after that. And this is very good. I mean, uh, uh, option uh, to 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 be considered when you are uh, inside out. This is first. Second, I have one question, uh, Percy. <clears throat> I heard from a lot of people that during coverage, uh, they are following the, uh, I mean, the, the eye must be on the ball. What is your opinion about coverage? Uh, because it's uh, uh, different schools, but uh, I believe that, or I heard from some schools, some uh, big coaches that I must be on the ball. I mean, that during I spike the ball and the ball going to the block and the, the coverage uh, uh, person or player must uh, watch the ball moving and then cover the ball. What, what is your opinion? So, uh, my opinion is about the... You have to be able to help your team first. So you have to, to, to be in alert all the time. And the other important thing, Sheriff, is after the, the setter define the setting, uh, the balls come from the block, not from the, the spiker. It's a, bi a big, big mistake that the players do during the, the, the game. They are looking for the spikers. It's a, it's a big mistake, in my opinion, especially young guys. Uh, he has to put your attention, your eyes, your vision in the block and uh, understand that this ball can return for your, your court in the block. So uh, after the setting, define the, the seg for, for, for example, for position four, everybody move inside of the court with a big responsibility to cover uh, from distance or close, depending on the position that you are in the court, but looking the block, the blockers, or, or I mean, it's better to say blockers, and uh, red to, to reaction for the ball. So I think this is a, a good thing. Okay, uh, I think uh, it's it's a, a a new opinion, but uh, I mean, uh, what the other opinion said that during the the watching the block, the ball will come to the block and rebound, and then I will watch the ball and and make the reception or or I make the coverage. That's why they the other the other school said that we must be our eyes on the ball. I mean, because it's very fast ball coming from the hand of the spiker. To the block and then defendable. Okay, yeah, yeah. The, the next, okay. Uh, the next, I think now we will open the door for questions uh, okay. uh, and we will uh, give the opportunity. Tarek, are, are you with us? Tarek, come on. Okay. 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 Tangana in Cameroon. Tangana. Hello, Rene. Okay. Cameroon. Oh, if the Bali Vadia Tora Cameroon. I can read. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the question of the yeah, Tangana. Uh, Tangana, yes. Uh, Tangana, yes. Uh, what are the, the key points to rev the same percentage of success depending on whether the set is in the front court or in the back court? Uh, I think it's not about the setter, the position of the set. It's, it's about the, the condition of your spikers, for example, because uh, in the distribution of the setting, uh, the all all rotations have to be equilibrated. Uh, so you can equilibrate the setting 
if you have a, a good spikers in back row or in front. So it's too much, I think it's more important than the setter that you, you have to, to be in your team, uh, spikers with good, good condition to spike from back row or pipe or, or back one. So it's not about the setter exactly. Setter, of course, will do the, the, the magic to put this guy uh, in, in, in the best condition as possible. So I think this is uh, more important. You have to find good guys, good spikers uh, in, in, the, in your team, not about only about the setter. Okay? If you don't have uh, a good spikers from back row, of course, you will have more problem nowadays to get a point or, or to, to win because uh, the, the spike from back row is an uh, important part of the game. Okay, Chef? Okay, the next question from Pool Vituk. Uh, uh, pick me took exactly. In, uh, yes, pick me took. All Pulp right. Took. In Africa, we do have bad reception, but we will uh, but with you explanation about the zones green, yellow, and red. We improve our attitude or how to convert it be a point. So, uh, as I said, for example, you have to understand the culture or the uh, physical characteristic of your people. For example, if you don't have a, a good reception, you have to, to find uh, a monster spikers. <laughs> That's the, the good, good answer for this. Because uh, with bad reception, it's very difficult to play in high level. I know that. Uh, but you have to train your your guys, your, your spikers, uh, the ball that comes from out of system. And you have chance to, to improve because uh, when I, I show you the, the study of Leandro Dutra, uh, I'm not uh, talking about the good or bad reception. I'm talking about the, the efficiency of the side out. All right, uh, the efficiency uh, is directly uh, connected with the, the good spikers. And the good spikers, they are good if he, they, they can spike uh, all kinds of the this, this setting. For example, high ball, uh, fast ball, uh, and get a point in different uh, situation. In comfortable areas or the, the setting that came from the out of system. So I think it's more important. So if you don't have a good reception, you have to improve your, your spikers, especially in the high balls. All right. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The next is Tolani uh, Mafuza. Uh, I don't know, Tarek, uh, are you able to, to, op to give the floor to Tolani? to show himself and to, say, to read his uh, question or not? I think it's not a question. Okay. Tolani? Tolani? Sorry, hi. You uh, can hear me, Pesi? Hi. Yes, yes. Go, Tolani. Thank, Go. thank you, Pesi. Thank you for the good presentation. Uh, I just wanted uh, to understand uh, in terms of uh, when we are playing out of system yeah. uh, uh, and what uh, you can maybe just make a comment when, uh, when the teams are playing out of system uh, and which teams are in terms of conversion are most likely going to perform better uh, when uh, you know, we, are, we are looking at the reception point of view. All right. Okay. What is exactly the question? <laughs> because I, I didn't understand. Sorry. <laughs> oh, 
I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying if we have, uh, the teams, we play a lot these days out of system. You're right. Okay. So now I want you to explain to me the characteristics of a team that performs better out of system when it comes to... All right. All right. Okay. So uh, you, have to, you have to try to improve your spiker. For example, uh, imagine the, the court and the, uh, the set comes from the, from the reception seal out of system, right? Uh, the set goes to the position, our position four. What you have to do to get a point in this case, Tulani, Mafoz, yes? So you have some options, of course, to do. The first, try to get by power, but never in the hands of the middle blocker, <laughs> please. Because this is not a good way to, to, to pass the ball. You have to try to, uh, to, to, to spike in the end of the court, in the, in the, the zone five, all right? But mm -hmm. for my experience, uh, put the, the best power in that. Because if you don't put the power in, the, in this option, you, you are giving a, 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 a big gift for the libero, all right? So if you decide to you attack in the end of the curve, in the zone, in the direction of the zones, zone five, put your best power to get it. It's one of your options. The second one, uh, block out can be in the, the, the last, in the right, if you are in position four, right? Uh, the right hand of the position, the blocker that is stay in position two, right hand, to, to explode in his hand and go out, but never down, never the ball have to, to go down, to, to touch, have to touch in the hand, not in the arm. It's totally different. Did you understand, Tulani? Yeah, I understand, yeah. Well, wow, good. So try to, the ball touch the hands because hands is not, is, is, is easy to, to use, right? Okay, okay. The, so if you the, can add on, on setting I, by other players on that. Yeah, I didn't finish, wait. <laughs> so, but the most important yeah, and I'm trying to, to change the, the characteristic of the, the my team, the, the gears, that they, they have to use 100% of the jump. Because normally, especially women, if the ball comes from out of system, they not use 100% of the power in, the, in jump. So the, the first thing that you have to change, jump 100%, if the ball comes from the, the out of system, right? The setting comes from the out of system. Because if you jump 100%, you have two chance to tip the ball, to put power in the end of the, the court, to use uh, the, the block out, use the hands of the blocker. But if you don't use 100% that your power, you, you lose everything. You lose the tip, you lose the, the chance to, 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 to spike with uh, the, uh, the best power that you have. Uh, you lose the chance to use the block out. So the big change that you have to do, jump 100% all the time. And after decide what you have to do. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, good. Thank you. Very good. Let's go, Ahmed, Samir. Uh, hi, Mr. Perzi. Hi, Mr. Shreep. Welcome to our uh, African community. Okay. Uh, my question is about the transition from one skill to another skill. Uh, I think it's very important for the player to do it well. For example, is in inside out uh, from reception position to be prepared to attack. Uh, so what is the concept to connect two skills in the training? And if you may give us some examples. Thank you. All right. Okay, Ahmed. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I understand that it's too much important to use uh, uh, to use the we, we call in Brazil the second ball to attack in the block to come back to to start again, right? So, uh, but some coaches uh, train to to try to get the point uh, by side out immediately. So to, to, to keep the, 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 the opponent under pressure, because if you get side out, you get side out, all the time the opponent will be under pressure to get a point and to play the same level than you. So uh, I think it's important to, to put uh, uh, blockers uh, in front and try to, to, to understand uh, what the spike has to do to ball to, to touch the block and come back for your team and try again. So uh, sometimes if you put the uh, the real blocker, uh, you cannot do it easily. But if you put like a, a table, uh, something uh, like a, a block, you can train it a little bit better. So. I think it's important to, to use the other tools to improve that. So like, a, I don't know the name in English, the, that's, that's table that uh, represent the, the block. So it's important to, to do it. But uh, try first to get a point, if, it, if it possible, if it's, it's possible, of course, try to get a point directly from the the side out. Uh, don't forget, uh, jump 100%. It's a, 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 a big key to get a success. Even if you receive setting, setting from the out of system, right? Because the big problem for, for especially for women, uh, if the ball comes from back, uh, the jump is not 100% and you lose everything. So I think it's is important, but sometimes you don't have the chance to jump 100%. I, I am saying, if you had a chance to jump 100%, do it. And decide uh, in the highest point as possible what you have to do to get a point. Do you understand, Ahmed? It's totally different, right? Good. Thank you. Can, can we talk about the movement of the player uh, from the reception to prepare himself to attack, second motion. Again, please. Uh, please, uh, we have to give the floor to other uh, okay. questions because we, we don't have enough time. All right. Please, okay. if you have any any question, just uh, brief, brief uh, I'll give it in brief, and then uh, we, we can go for the next. To another, to another one. Okay, Ahmed, do it uh, right again, all right? Okay. Tell him. Okay, uh, about uh, the, the second move, I'm, I'm the player who, uh, who will get the reception. I will prepare myself after after reception to attack. The second so, move of the player. All right, after reception. After reception, I will prepare myself to attack. That is exactly. my second motion as a player. Right. How to connect the two in the training, the two motion in the training. Exactly. For example, uh, the, it's depending, of course, the First, the quality of the reception. If the quality of the reception was A, right? Uh, the movement of your spiker, receiver spiker, have to be as fast as possible. Because probably you have a, 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 a big chance to receive a fast ball. Okay? If, but depending about your concept as coach, to put it in the court. If your the reception of your receiver was not so good, I mean, the, the ball keeping the out of system, the movement, no need to be so fast. They, they have to be red before the setting. Red to move. So it, it's about two important things that I didn't say because it's need to more time to, to say. For example, the, the outside hitter in position four, imagine it, please. 
he made a very good reception, right? He moved in front. Normally, he used only one step to attack. Exactly the, the first tempo. But if the ball, it was not a good reception. It's a out of season. Probably he has to use two steps. No, so it's, it's totally different. So you have to understand, you put it in your, your train to, to get a, a good connection with these two different balls, but for the same position, in position four, for example. So you have to decide how many steps you will have in fastball, how many steps you, you have to use in high balls. All right? It's totally different. So good reception, be ready as fast as possible. Bad reception, use probably two steps normally. All right? Go ahead, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Percy, please, we have a, a, a question on the Facebook uh, ah. talking about uh, uh, coming from uh, Gloria, right? G Gloria, no, no, before oh. Fidel. Uh, ah, Gloria before. Fidel uh, said for all the, the teaching uh, on reception, what is your advice on four-man reception? Four-man reception. Uh, Yes. Depend. Depend, especially from the 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 this, the opponent serves. Of course, uh, if the opponent serves has a, a a very aggressive, very powerful serves, you have to put more people to cover uh, the area. So it's 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 too much important to understand. The, the kind of serves that will uh, they will will do so if the uh, if not uh, aggressive serves no need to put one more guys to, in the reception line because you have a chance to to produce more doubts more conflict zones with four guys only in special moments like uh, aggressive serves for example but it's important it, it, a lot of uh, things, especially in the high level, put four guys uh, like opposite, opposite, for example, to receive the ball and try to keep the ball uh, in zone eight to try to, to, to continue to play. All right? Okay, yeah, I understand and I would like to add also that in, in especially in men, uh, nowadays a lot of uh, coaches are working uh, very hard and very uh, uh, more. I mean, to to make the the serve. Uh, I mean, in a higher speed. Uh, that's why we can find, especially I was in in the World Cup and before in the World Championship in 2019, 2018. I saw, by the way, Nishida from from Japan. The serve now arrived to 138 kilometers. Exactly. That's why I mean, we need. Uh, when we find the serve, uh, uh, we can we have to think about uh, four, of, or uh, also we can ask the coach to come and assistant coach to uh, to receive with us because it's very <laughs> exactly. very fast. Okay. Exactly. And but, also yeah. uh, Leal, Leal from from Brazil. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I saw at one thirty five. I mean they, they are like that. I mean that's why we have to be ready for for that. And also, I think everybody, if they have the, the, the way of I mean, receiving with the serve machine, it will be better because we can uh, provide this speed with the serve machine. It's, it's not easy uh, in our region to find this speed. And when we find this speed outside, we will have a lot of problems because it's not easy to receive this fast ball yeah. and high speed ball. Okay, and the next... Oh other, other thing, Chef, about this, and uh, uh, probably with this this uh, this uh, speed that they are doing, it's not like a reception. It's like a defense. If you keep the yeah. ball in zone eight, you have chance to play with two options in attack. It's it's a bonus for you in this case. So try to do it. 
But if you need me to, to receive, I'm ready to help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, the next is uh, uh, from Islam Osma, because uh, Fadili was not in the uh, relevant to, to the, the faith reported uh, at the end. Uh, Islam said about uh, Islam with us or not or not with us. Okay. Um, how He's can... with us. Okay, Islam, please. Hey, Islam. Yes, coach, with you, but I am in highway now because that I uh, I write my questions. All right. Okay. Take care. Take care, please. Uh, right. How can I know? How can I know how much uh, percentage to focus side on side out? with my team in all right man level per person perfect for you have to divide uh, uh, according uh, your quality of the reception a d or c uh, a and b and out of system uh, normally the percentage of the, the side out in reception a is so high because you are in good condition, the best condition that you have. So uh, more than 70%, it's a good good uh, number to start. I mean, uh, one against one, it's obligated to get a point. So, uh, but you have to, to get a point from outside of system also. So yeah, your efficiency, have to be good in uh, in 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 set that come from out of system. So it's more difficult, not for for you specifically for your team, but for all things in the world. Uh, so you have to practice more times, more uh, more repetitions in this uh, kind of the the situation. And if you have, for example, by the side out uh, as uh, by data volley, if you get uh, one point in 1.5 serves, you are in good way, very good way inside out. Uh, if you try to keep as close as possible uh, from number one, uh, number one, probably you have a big chance to win. So uh, try to keep your side out very close to 1.5 1 1 uh, in data volley system uh, or in evaluation of data volley. You have a big chance to, 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 to win, all right? So, but train more uh, the setting from that came from out system. All right. Okay, Thanks, Martin. sir. Good luck. Okay. Uh, the, the question from Fadidi, he changed the question and said, kindly advise if there are uh, differences on training side outs on men and women uh, advanced athletes. Yeah. It's about the, the, the concept of the training. For example, if you change one important thing that I saw every time in the women, in women teams, uh, if the players from women team believe that the ball that comes from uh, out of scenes, uh, they have to jump 100%, maybe you are in good good way to get more points inside out. The problem is the gears in general don't use your 100% of jump uh, in, in, in ball that not uh, come from reception way. If you try to, to identify it, to change the, the concept of these gears, maybe you are in, you have a, a, a big chance to, to win. So try. No, have nothing to, to lose. Just to, to, to make some uh, advantage in, in different situations. So try. And the side out, you have to, you have a chance to, to train 
uh, part of the side out or the side out uh, uh, together. For example, uh, reception, you can do uh, the specific training for reception, but under, under objective, under challenge, uh, or under something, all right? You, you, you have a chance to, to train together the reception with setting and put some challenge for both for the reception and for the for the the setter uh, and of course you have to uh, we have a chance to training to train a spike from different zone of reception and you have a chance to train together uh, i think it's not too much difficult at all, or not too much difference when the when, when you train uh, men or, or women no help because the side out is it, it, one action yeah uh, reset re reception setting and spike so no have too much difference to how to train it in different uh, situation right okay but, uh, we, we we have uh, another four question uh, i think we must go very fast because uh, we have around uh, 12 or 11 minutes to go Okay. Uh, we have a question uh, from uh, Sylvester uh, Mapenza. Yes. Camiso Vilacati. No, no, no. It's uh, on the on the chatting. Ah, on the chatting. Right. Uh, how how to get out the situation uh, when the setter is in position five, opponent has a, a strong serve service uh, and reception is in the red area, the setter from position five. And wow. they have some okay. difficulties, okay? Yes, it's not only him. I think everybody in the world have this <laughs> the same problem. But it's about, again, about the concept of your reception. For example, uh, did you remember when I said about the, the aggressive serves? Okay, good. Uh, try to keep the ball in position eight or between three, three and six, because uh, if you, you get it, you have a chance to continue to play with a minimum level, like two options to, to, to set, for example, or two spikers able to attack. Uh, that's more important than position, for example. So it's important to keep the ball uh, with a minimum level to continue to play. The problem is when the ball not goes in, from uh, aggressive service, not goes to the, the zone eight. So the, the ball come outside of the court. It's, uh, it's almost impossible to attack in, in, with a good, good uh, efficiency. So if you, you try to, to to, to change the the zone that's important to keep to to play in, with a good level it's more important than all I think it's a good good uh, solution for that okay let's go okay, the next question is very fast um, uh, uh, he needs uh, could you could uh, you advise coaches in a scenario? whereby your team can get more like five chances and they didn't they don't score uh, they filled the score in five uh in, in i mean five points in a row they lost the five points and they didn't score uh, uh, the, the problem coming from reception uh what do you advise well the advice is first try to improve the reception if because with the bad reception almost impossible to play high level and uh, the second try to pray a little bit more to to pray <laughs> as in the, the church to to pray to someone to help you but in the in the training try to put your concept inside of the court like uh, aggressive serves i have to put the ball in eight Okay, uh, weak service, it's obligatory, it's mandatory that we have a good reception. Oh, I mean, 
Yeah, it's important to play as in the best condition that we have. The second one, uh, from the bet, if you you make uh, two or three points in a row, time out, please. I think can help you to, to reorganize your team and the, the, you can change the, the, the way that you, uh, the game you are, are running. Uh, so, if try to adjust your best receiver uh, with the direction of the, the, the best direction of the server. So, you have to organize a little bit with more error, with less error for the, the best to receive. The best to receive have to touch the ball more times as possible. So, have a lot of things to do. Uh, but probably, uh, you don't get it in the training. Probably you, you didn't get it during the game. So uh, try to, to organize and train according to your, your concepts in reception. All right? And good luck. Next one. Uh, Sheriff, turn on. Uh, Mapuzu, Mapuzu uh, asking you, uh, how do you com convince or uh, still the belief in women that they still jump higher and put power even when out of system? Good. Very good, uh, Mibuzu. Uh, it's difficult to, to convince them that it's, it's possible. But uh, first, they, they need to, to believe in you first, in the, your concept. If the gears believe in, in your concept, in your work, in your, your, your plan, probably uh, they will get the, uh, to try, at first to try. Uh, to jump hard all the time. So the second point uh, is about number. Uh, if you try uh, training and in the next match, you can see if they, they get something different than before, it's a good reason to try to change. But not try, I think, is the worst way to, to get something. The uh, other thing that you can say for the girls, no have nothing to lose if you not try it. And if you get something, it's a plus. So try. No have nothing to lose. Go. Let's go, Sheriff. The next question, the last, I mean, the last two questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think, I don't know if we have Amadou with us here. Amadou. Okay. Uh, Dave, uh, then uh, Fred uh, Serenga uh, from Fred, are you here? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Percy. Fred here. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Percy, for good uh, helping presentation. I kindly advise if there are uh, differences or differences on training side out on men and women, uh, advanced athletes. I think we have we have the same. Uh, yeah, oh, I think I answered it before. Okay, for Amadou, are you are you here, Amadou? Yeah. Amadou, please. Amadou. I think he's taking a nap. Okay. The the question of Amadou: How do you? Handle yes. How do you handle uh, the mental of young players to reach the highest level? I think it's out of our uh, I mean subject, but we can answer it. And then the next is, what is the the per, the particular uh, the per particularity uh, of woman uh, mental uh, talking? I mean, it's a, a, like a, a, a mental, but if you have one or two minutes, then we, we, we have to go after that. 
Okay, let's go. First, uh, about the youngs, it's they are under construction, right? So you have to give them the the good way, and the, the, if you from the beginning uh, put the the concept that you understand uh, in each training, uh, I think a little bit easier to to get a, a building a good play for the future. Uh, but of course, you have to respect the age, the characteristic of the, the players, the experience that probably they don't have. So uh, patience is the, 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 the great word to, to use all the time when you are working with the young guys, because probably they will make a lot of mistakes. It's a part important to, to building a good uh, good player. Uh, and for your side, you have to give him the tools to understand what the best way to follow. So uh, no have a recipe about this. You have just one thing, work, work, work hard, hard all the time. Uh, give uh, feedback all the time about the, their evolution. And that's it. No, and give him a, a, the time to to improve by the, themselves. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, the last question in one minute. Uh, right. Do you, Do you think the changements and evaluations of profiles, players, and uh, intense specialization? Of players affect the side out out the side out positively. I mean, is it it will be positive if you change the the place of players and uh, uh, I mean the the position uh, the positions of players and if they are special as a, a middle blocker to change them to be reception player or opposite to be a outside hitter. Is it positive sometimes? But depends on the, the category or the, the age that they are. For example, for me, uh, if you do it when they are young, it's totally positive. But for example, in the, the professional, uh, in the high level or junior or under 21, it's almost impossible to change. Of course, you can try yeah, for better. If they have some some conditions to play in different po position, why not to try? But normally it happens when they are young. Nothing. Sure, I I, I, yeah. I, I, I believe that your uh, your of course your your opinion is very uh, uh, positive for that. It's right uh, because in the top level, it's it's not easy to to change. To be a reception player under this level of service and so on. That's yeah. why in, in, in young players, yes, it's it's possible, but in top level players, it's not easy. Almost it's not possible. It's, in the young players, it's it's one it's minute. Ma yeah, it's mandatory because they yeah. need to to sure. to play in different functions, in different zones, in different situations to improve. And during his his uh, improvement decide what they really they will play in the future, right? Okay, okay, Percy, uh, I would like to thank you very much for the valuable uh, uh, webinar and valuable information. And I would like to thank all our colleagues in CVB, uh, uh, Enzo and uh, Tarek and Hisham. And also I would like to thank uh, Dr. Elwani and also the the, uh, the the board because they are supporting us for these webinars and I hope in the future we can ask you again uh, when you have time to join us and uh, thank you for everything. Hey brother, Sheriff, it's a pleasure for me to, to, to share this great time with you. Uh, if you need some time from me, I am all the time, I will be ready to, to help you. And you of course much. not to help, but to, to share a good day. Good moments like uh, like today. Good okay, luck thank for you. everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.
बाय बाय